Do with me, O Lord, as it pleases you. My life, my heart, my soul, my riches, all is yours, Lord. This passionate petition went up to the throne of God like incense from the fiery heart of a young woman, widow in France, called Madame de la Peltrie. She was just 24 years old, but her heart ardently desired to serve God without any reserve. Years later, this young woman received a copy of a letter written from a far-off land by a Jesuit missionary. As she began to read the letter, the words of the priest inflamed her heart. Alas, writes the Jesuit priest, is there no charitable and virtuous lady who will come to this country to gather up the blood of Christ by teaching his words to the little Indian girls? Madame de la Peltrie needed no more. Her vocation was revealed to her as if an angel had spoken. God had destined her for the mission to a great nation across the seas, Canada. There was no room for half measures in her generous heart. She decided immediately to follow the will of God. After this, she actually received a mystical revelation from our Lord that her mission was to go to Canada as a confirmation, uh, to go to Canada and there labor for the conversion of all the little Indian girls. Our Lord promised her that she would go to Canada and spend the rest of her days there doing apostolate. Great souls are tested by God with great trials. Soon after miraculously receiving her vocation, um, she fell gravely ill. All hope vanished, and it seemed her soul would depart for eternity at any moment. But what about the promise Christ had made to her? Could it have been all just maybe an illusion? She hoped against all hope and decided to have recourse to the great and glorious Saint Joseph. Madame de la Peltrie made a promise to build a church in his honor in Canada and to devote herself and to devote all her riches, all her wealth, to the service of the young little Indian girls. As soon as she made the promise, she fell asleep. When she awoke, the doctors surrounding her were astonished and one of them went and asked her, what happened to your illness, madame? Your illness seems to have gone to Canada. And, and the, the young woman replied, hardly able to hold back her tears of joy. Yes, yes, sir. As you say, my illness has gone to Canada. While all this was happening, in a convent in another city, in Tours, um, always in France, a young Ursuline nun had a prophetic dream. Sœur Marie de l'Incarnation, that was her name, dreamt that a young lady whom she had never seen or she didn't know um, took her by her hand and led her on a journey westward towards the ocean, towards the sea. They arrived at a beautiful place. The two ladies then met a holy man dressed in white. He was the guardian of this beautiful place, and he invited them to enter. When they entered, they saw a church, and they saw Our Lady and the little infant Jesus in her arms above the church. Now, at the foot of the church, they saw a beautiful and great country with immense forests and high mountains. Some years later, Sœur Marie de l'Incarnation was at prayer when our Lord spoke to her from the Blessed Sacrament and told her that the beautiful country she had seen in her dream was Canada. 
and he wanted her to open a house for Jesus and Mary in that country. But who was the holy man dressed in white? Was he, was he the guardian of that country? It was none other than so St. Joseph himself. St. Joseph, to whom the newly formed nation had been consecrated some years earlier by the Recollect Fathers and by the governor of Canada of the time called Samuel de Champlain. St. Joseph had taken this consecration very seriously and he is therefore the guardian of the Great White North. There is one more mystery to be unraveled here. Who was the lady in the dream who had led Sister Marie de l'Incarnation by hand? It was none other than Madame de la Pelletrie. When Sister Marie de l'Incarnation met up with Madame de la Pelletrie a short while after she had had the dream, she was astonished that it was the same woman she had seen in her dream. Finally, on the 4th of May um, in the year 1639, the women missionaries left on a ship to their dreamland, Canada, with St. Joseph as their captain and the Blessed Virgin Mary, the star of the sea, to guide them. They were accompanied by three other nuns, hospital nuns, and some Jesuit priests. And what was the name of the ship? What else could the ship be named if not St. Joseph? Now, our enthu enthusiastic sisters, therefore, um, prayed the office, attended Holy Mass, and sang hymns on their long trip across the ocean. Everything was going perfectly well. Well, it seemed going, that everything was going well until one day, it was the Feast of the Holy Trinity, and the sisters were finishing their morning prayers when all of a sudden they heard a loud cry in the dense fog. The crew had not perceived, but they were faced with an immense mountain of ice. An iceberg stood dauntless in their way. There was not enough time to steer clear. Death was only moments away. It seemed that, like, like his divine son Jesus, our beloved Saint Joseph, was actually sleeping on the ship. Well, the Jesuit father, Le Père Vimont, who was there, boldly made an appeal and a promise to Our Lady and to Saint Joseph. And Saint Joseph never fails his faithful. At the last moment, the ship miraculously was able to steer clear of the iceberg, and the crew and the priests and sisters watched as the towering block of ice passed inches from their boat. The last obstac obstacle had been crossed, full steam ahead, therefore, to Canada. Now, Canada is the only nation to have St. Joseph as its principal patron and guardian. And the biggest shrine dedicated to the glorious St. Joseph in the world is found in the city of Montreal, Canada. I could talk all day about my beloved uh, country, Canada, and all that St. Joseph has done um, and continues to do for her and for me, but I'll have to stop here. Just maybe a little parting reflection. Maybe that iceberg that they had to confront in order to reach Canada Maybe that means something. Canada is a great nation with a great calling from God, but she seems to have a great obstacle in her path. She was baptized as a young child, and now as a strong young adult, Canada seems to have wandered just a little wee bit from the faith and the mission of her founding fathers. There seems to be an immense iceberg in her path, towards the Christian mission for which she is called. Well, let's be confident. Let's ask St. Joseph to come to her aid once again. Let's ask him to help Canada realize its vocation for the glory of Jesus and Mary. If you like this video, please let me know in the comments here below. Share with your friends. Maybe together, just maybe together, we can wake Canada up to her providential and prophetic mission. And may Almighty God bless you all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Salve Maria. If you like this video, press the like button and leave a comment below.
Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our videos.